Okay, so uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome and glad that you are joining us today in the uh, sixth issue of uh, Ed Plus uh, Architecture and Design Talk. So uh, this is where we will be talking about architecture, design and more. So for, so for today's uh, edition, uh, we have here with us joining us today is Mr. Tai Zhe Yong from Into Design. So he will be talking on the topic of out of the box. So uh, before we, 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 we pass the session to him, uh, here are some background of our speaker today, Mr. Tai Zhe Yong and his wife, uh, Lab Choi Swan, founded uh, Into Design Lab in 2009. It is a multidisciplinary design studio in Kuching. Uh, together with Sim Siok Peng, the studio offers architecture education and architectural design specializing in schools, institutions, and playscapes. With an interest in crafting spaces for learning and creative play, they are uh, passionate in designing furniture, toys, playscapes, and schools, and have received architectural awards and recently initiated community projects at schools and even founded their own cardboard furniture brand, Up To You. So they also organize multiple events such as Cardboard City with Palm Sarwa chapter and conduct workshops that promote children's creative learning environments through architecture design and installations. Part of Into Design Lab, Tay is also design director for PDC Design Group. And recently he is uh, one of our part-time forces, part-time lecturers, uh, teaching architectural design studio here at Unimas. So we welcome Mr. Tay. So uh, without further ado, let's just, uh, I would like to pass uh, this, uh, the whole session to you, Mr. Tay. Thank you, Dr. Atta. Sure. Thanks for inviting. Actually, I, I pre-recorded the, um, can you hear me, Atta? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Loud and clear. Yeah, I pre-recorded these uh, presentations, tried for the first time. So there is a little bit of the, mistake in there. So after that, I, I might fast forward a little bit, but we'll see how. Good afternoon. Thanks, Unimas, for inviting. Let me stay. My topic today is out of the box. Box could mean constraint, limitation, order, confinement, or difficulties. The projects I'm showing you today are mainly educational related. I will share about our research and experiment of placemaking projects at local schools for the past five years, problem that we have encountered or discovered, thinking out the box solutions to make things better and differently. These are our completed projects over the past few years. Ongoing commercial projects and recently completed projects but today I'm not going to talk about this. Before I joined Unimas two months ago, I was also a part-time lecturer at local college from 2008 to 2018. I particularly like experimenting design with students, mostly installation projects. Here are some of the examples of installation projects that I work together with my students, which really interest me. This is the brand installation by using 5,000 recycled card, plastic card to promote sustainability during the War Architecture Day a few years back. There's a video here. Palms and colored water were incorporated to create a valuable effect for young children to trigger their creativity. Most of the projects were movable. Sometimes we have tested mobility through cardboard boxes. More examples of installation projects with students. For example, the temporary installations of floating green on the Strawat River. In year 2016, we have completed a school design project, the Eton International School in Kajang, Selangor, with CLO architect in KL. This school is quite well designed in every aspect, and we won PAM Silver Award for this institution category. 
this is our first school project and somehow back in Kuching, this raised our concern about local education environment, especially the public and national school. As we know, this is how the local public school looks like and also school of the past, which architecturally does not change much since 1960s or 70s. And look at the public school in our neighboring country. The question is, can we do anything to our local school? We start to concern about the local school environment, especially on the 21st century teaching and learning method. These are views of local school in Kuching. Because we all know that the importance of creative environment in nurturing young mind and our kids will determine the future of the nations. And as an architect or designer, I think we can help. The simple question is how to improve local schools environment. We began with a series of little projects at local schools that we intended to help and influence a little on the school environment. We call it a school byproduct project. The little mobile library project is one of the series and we began with designing a small reading corner for a primary school and we funded it ourselves for community work. This is our um, initiative to promote literacy of reading and creative learning environment. It was designed simply with little mobile shelves, which is flexible to be indoor or outdoor, because we believe environment induce curiosity in reading. For example, on the left, the teacher's expectation of a typical reading corner at school, and on the right is what we gave to the school, which is movable, portable, and flexible. Our approach was to inspire children through a simple gesture design formed by ir irregular arrangements of bookshelves, display shelves, and also benches. It immediately becomes a decentralized space with school compound. Half a year after the installation of the mobile library version 1 in SJK Bintawa, the headmaster called us to help to design a reading pavilion. The project is fully sponsored by a parent of the student from the school who was inspired by the mobile library project and voluntary to offer a direction to build a reading pavilion for storytelling program and outdoor learning. Honestly, what appeared in my mind uh, are all these types of, of uh, product that I'm familiar with, but none of them would be in line with the mobile library. So we began our design process with a simple cute form, similar to a toy. Understand that the basic form can induce creativity to children. So I, we tested it with rotating along the edges. The space within begin to transform, as you can see here. We discovered the space within is quite interesting. However, you will have a stability problem in terms of structure and constructability. So the cube was sunken slightly to the ground. So eventually three faces facing upwards are covered to form the roof. Teachers, parents and students and the neighboring community offered to clean up the surrounding upon completion. It's really a simple project, but we hope that by influencing their participation in this project, we can nurture creativity in the children and serve development. Almost a year later, we came back here with the students to paint a mural on the roof. The outcome is looking striking and attractive. It has become a, a hot spot or a gathering spot for students at this school. We challenged the design in complexity with mobile library version 2. It was uh, an, a flexi flexible and yet compacted with all-in-one set. The stools became the closure uh, for the bookshelves compartment in the center. Children are free to interpret and interact with this library through probably removing the seats, rearranging with own configuration 
and finally reassemble back to the shelves. This fun activities encourages reading, allowing the children to explore possibilities. For version, version 3, it is a multi-functional library with shelves and cardboard stools inserted at the bottom part. Cardboard material is also used to raise awareness about sustainable, sustainable environment. This version maintains the orthogonal shape like version 2, which is flexible and all-in-one and also mobile, movable. The shelving are stacking on top of each other and the number of tiers can be increased by on choice. It can be dismantled easily, easier for transportation and reassemble. Cardboard stools can be um, reconfigured easily. We have mass produced this version and most importantly, it, it is cost effective and more schools will be benefited from this. After that, we called for uh, donations for this little library project. Overall, the, the little mobile library has a mission to instill the interest of reading and the importance of sharing from young age. Most of the mobile little library was sent to the rural school away from coaching. We're hoping more and more children and school will be benefiting from it. And until today, we managed to get donations from public, friends and organizations such as uh, Rotary Club and send out more than 25 sets of little mobile library to local and rural school. We feel uh, satisfied as we always believe that architects can make a difference. A part of inducing we also care about the classrooms, layout and environment. Bear in mind that the 21st, 21st century learning has in, already implemented in our primary school educational system long time ago, but are we ready for it? Look at how the creative classroom in other and neighboring countries. This is the common type of classroom in Malaysia during 1960s, similar in Kuching. And this is the present classrooms. The most obvious thing that changed was probably only from blackboard to whiteboard and with projectors. How can the children be creative in this type of classroom? And we need to revolutionize the, the classroom design. In other places, creative classroom is now getting rid of uh, traditional school furniture for more innovative and creative pieces, such as flexible seating with variety in arrangement and types, flexible tables with wheels in interesting shapes, making it easier to reconfigure adjustable height for different usage and all that. Is the typology of traditional classroom still relevant? That's what we has been questioning about. Or can it be better? Or can it be more playful and creative? We found the answer from the children themselves. They are full of imagination with a very simple or same set of materials available. There could be different rules of playing from slide to an airport runway or to a board, as you can see. Um, and to a barrier in traffic games set up. Children are born to be innovative. A simple modular system is even better to trigger their imagination like Lego. With limited resources, we introduce the unconventional and recycled recycle material furniture, which is the corrugated uh, trapezoid stools as a modular furniture to create a fun environment in the classroom. The left is affordable creative classroom that we tried to introduce and on the right is the luxury creative classroom layout. We always believe that if we think creatively, creativity can be quite affordable. We distributed the stools invented by ourselves to test the reaction of the children. 
by observing how they interact with them. Although the stools are just a basic form of an object, the children were eager to play with it. They began arranging the stools randomly in order or stacking on each other as if they are playing with the blocks. They totally transformed the classroom layout into a more creative and fun environment. Children enjoy the free time and play in the classroom with the stools. Probably this is the first time they can play with the furniture. And this was, this was the, the after effect of the children play with the creative objects. We hope that through interactive learning, the children will learn to make own choices and thus rest a well-rounded um, children in the future. Trapezoid um, stools actually can be a uh, teaching tools for ch teachers in the process of introducing creative learning um, environment too. It's happy to see the students um, um, they start to personalize the stools, drawing on it or writing names, and give senses of belonging and appreciation to things they like. It's true that the creativity can actually be affordable. It has also become a musical instrument during the Bukharu event at Pustaka Sarawak and look at how the children interact with it. So we continue to explore the table set apart from the stools. And cardboard is also the main material. It's recyclable and easy to find and lower production costs. It is also used to raise awareness about sustainable environment to children. And we tested with a, a few prototypes, lot testing with my web and it's successful. And here's the overall outcome of after many rounds of testing and revising. This diagram shows that the comparison of new classroom layout with the orthogonal cardboard table set versus the conventional layout on the right. The new layout is definitely more flexible. We can transform the classroom layout into more creative and fun environment. And we tested it with children and observed um, their usage before sending and promoting to the schools. And the outcome is, is quite satisfying. Um, after that, we distributed a uh, few sets to uh, each schools in town and rural area in order to facilitate their teaching and learning process through the first century uh, classroom. We hold some workshops at schools and let the children to explore on the board table installations, discovering the cardboard from 2D to 3D table. Through continuing students' involvements, we discovered that the cardboard table set acts similarly um, to a toy, like um, furniture toy combinations, and it's made out of uh, recycled material with endless possibilities and also an open-ended design. We continue with workshops and, and experimenting the cardboard table set um, with children engagement that play with it, scribbles on it, and personalizing um, the, the furniture. Examples of how the children are playing with it. It can be easily crafted and replaced, add on and uh, combine, and then further alter or further alterations by them, by, by, the, by the children. And also easily to expand and it's, it's really uh, open and that kind of uh, design. We occasionally hosting constructing play workshops to promote the cardboard furniture set. Picture showing the interaction during the event. During the children festival at P Pustaka in 2018, we installed a large scale robot by using majority of the parts from the table which is the cardboard furniture set. 
involvement by my students and office interns. We constructed it together and seen during the event. And we got some order from friends after that and public. And uh, we also designed um, the packaging with flat pad concept like IKEA, easier and effective for transportations. And these are posters to promote the octabers and trapezus. And our research actually doesn't stop there. In 2017, we organized the Cardboard City Challenge with Pam Shrawat chapter with the support from Global Cardboard Challenge and What About Kuching event. Um, we promote the event at schools and work closely with their teachers and students. And we even participated the Cardboard Board Rest Challenge organized by Brooks Gallery in order to promote this Cardboard City event. I'm not the one to roll the Cardboard Board, but my students did it. Maybe my, by, by forcing, but it was a really fun event. We designed banners to hang at certain hotspot within Kuching. And through commun community engagement, we managed to get supports from various organizations, colleges and universities, and really feel thankful for their contribution to make the events happen. So during the event, the participating school will be allocated with a, a lot, lot size within the master plan of this cardboard city. This is how the master plans was set up as the base. Primary school uh, students were facilitated by colleges and university students. Scene of primary, uh, students, primary school students constructing their city. Some close-up views. Cardboard Cafe were also set up during the event by us. Trapezoids, uh, which is the stools, were used for sittings um, during the opening and also other um, storytelling sessions. And outside the um, black box, we have recycled cardboard for family and children to play and craft with it during the event. like from with the help from my students we managed to digitize the entire cardboard city after the event this is how the actual cardboard city looked like from above and notice the central tall structure and that is our installation within the center of the cardboard city and that was walking city installation acting as the central landmark of the entire city. The original working city was an idea by Aki Graham in 1964. Aki Graham was an avant-garde architectural group formed in 1960s that was um, neo-futuristic, drawing inspiration from technology in order to create a new reality that was solely expressed through hypothetical projects. Working city is one of their famous conceptual ideas. It's basically an artificially intelligent mobile robotic structures that could actually roam freely onto a post apocalyptic world, moving to whenever the structure's resources were needed. So it's like a plug in through the legs of the city. And because this event was installed during the war architecture there, um, so we were taught that, you know, it will be a good chance to actually introduce some classical, classic you know, architectural um, concept to the local children for their creativity or knowledge. The portion of the final outcome of my version of the cardboard, uh, sorry, the walking city versus the original conceptual drawings by Aki Graham in 19, 1960s. We began our installation by looking around all the recycled cardboard that we have collected from this event, carefully thought out on its connectivity and stability after that 
you know, no drawings were produced before the installation. And these diagrams were documented after the event and it demonstrates the, the assembly methods of the cardboard working city. The connection and relationship between these components reflect the kit of parts, uh, concept nature of the real working city by Aki Graham in 1960s. Parts of the, uh, the working city that we have produced. And slowly putting up um, the base and to make sure it is stable. The upper portion of it was set up with the help of my students, a lot of boxes. And then counter check is stability and aesthetic of its joints, just to make sure everything looks all right. And interesting compositions below the working city. The space is about two meter and is accessible. Details of the connections of cardboard parts. We are tying it together with the um, cable tie and some masking tapes. The leg joints of the working city. And the final outcome. It looks automated somehow, you know, like uh, walking um, within the city, plug into the cardboard buildings and connecting for resources. And it stands out as a main landmark and reference point within the, the cardboard city. And it was published on Intersection and, and other, other magazines like Architecture Malaysia. Since it was a walking city, so ideally we wanted it, you know, can be really movable, like almost like this. And eventually we really managed to move it around. You know, it was really fun in the end, but it's a bit brutal in the end, so I, I think I better stop here. Um, my students and also our partner in crimes for this cardboard city installations and the brutality as well. Some of them and my boy and all of them. I think after all the hardship was really worthwhile after seeing all the smiley faces from the students, um, teachers and general public. I think they have learned something um, from this event. So in 2018, we have another installment of this cardboard city. We have received more than 5,000 crowds visiting the event with about 20 primary schools involvement, um, 10 college uh, and university like UNIMAS, the participation from public and young architects for the uh, pavilion installations scene of um, primary school children demonstrating uh, teamwork, leadership, and cross-generation learning. We have ISS, uh, which is the International Space Station installation um, by us, stage in installation um, by the uni students and random installation by, by the school children. And we have pavilions installation um, for the competition from young architects and, and university students. This is before the exhibition, you know, the very energe energetic scene during the installation, um, before, actually before opening for, for public. And this time, um, we have installation inspired by the, as mentioned earlier, the, the in, International Space Station. The parts were mainly from the recycled cardboard and recycled um, table set. And uh, testing, we took it and test it with the uh, stability. And as usual, we can't actually have drawings or sketches produced before the installation. And we, we only somehow like mix and match all of the available recycled material collected this event. 
And this is the uh, overall outcome of the installation after three days of um, of collecting and assemble and testing. Similar to the working city, the lower part of, of the installations is actually accessible for public or, or by children and allowing them to actually observe the details and enjoying the space beneath. The center part of the installation, we have displayed the live streaming of the actual international space stations through apps and a part of matching to the team of the installation. I just want to further improve the children's creative thinking to another level with incorporating this uh, uh, tech technology. The scene during the, the events, a lot of crowd during the last day of the exhibition. View from above, eventually the, the place is filled with uh, works of collective effort from uh, school children, college and university students. So everyone had fun playing in the imaginary city for the weekends. And months later after the events, we were invited for the library design project for the Tunku Putra Health International School in Kuching. Common perception about the library design would be a library with books, bookshelves, table and chairs. It's generally used for searching for information purposes. Common and general library layout, similar to the Harry Potter library layout. Our approach was to design an open library with a central space in provoking engagement and sensory uh, response. It's not only the for research no, uh, of knowledge, but also with play, gathering, events and uh, creative, creative spaces. In an open plan design, children will be exper experiencing the spaces through visual sensitivity to colors, sense of touch, to different materials and texture. The, cent the center of the library, there is a semi-enclosed um, bookshelf with um, special embodiment experience, which will leave a lasting impression on children, hopefully. A part of the, of the interactive play that we have learned from the, the two Cardboard City events, we adopted the scene from the famous uh, classic picture storybook which is the, the busy war of Richard Scarry. The characters moving freely within the town with the road connecting from one destination to another. And there is certain landmark in the, um, in the, in the town illustrated, highlighted, um, in the story. And we try to apply this busy town Im imaginative space into this library design. This is the original plan of the library with columns and four walls. And we began the site planning with allocating the spaces within the library by avoiding the existing columns. The, the, inten the intention is to allow the children to actually roam freely within the, the, the library. And we have created a central road with a roundabout in the center of the road. Um, that's actually the book hive, acting as a central landmark in the library, you know, from columns, and then uh, we have this setup. And spaces like um, creative corner and storytelling area were incorporated at the certain road edge. And finally, infilled with all the required spaces, reading zone, art and craft area, resources center, and storytelling and all. This is the um, the general composition of the library. The book hive is actually the roundabout, allowing students to gush into after entering the library, like a bee swarming together, read and sensing within the space and the library. Storytelling platform at the edge of the central road, looking towards the book hive. Inside the book hive, 
with bookshelves at the backdrop and the porosity of the wall allowing the students to view in and out within the space. Um, within the book hive and other scene at the library with majority of the columns were actually hidden by certain treatment of design. For example, the cardboard trees installed at certain columns for young children reading area. Case of part of the cardboard tree installation done by us with careful thought on and Months later after the events, we were invited for the uh, playscape design in Kuching and it was um, recently completed. Months later, we were invited for the playscape design in Kuching and previous education recently, recently completed. As usual, we adopt the experience that we have learned from the previous educational projects like cardboard cities and other play elements. And children love to roam within the spaces, as we know, and hopping from one space to another. In general, we wanted to um, create a space that imitating the, the concrete jungle, a space for children to conquer and reimagine their little city, which they can roam about within the little corner of this uh, apartment project. And uh, a friend of mine reminded me that um, this playscape has a little bit of similarity to the mythical and older city in the world, which is the uh, Chata Huyo at Turkey. And the city was, was accessible from ladders from top of the house, and the re residents are roaming freely from the top rooftop to another. I really thought it was quite similar. For the site planning, we made um, full use of the allowable land size for this uh, playscape. We began with the process to overlay the site with two by two meter grid. Two meter is because of the standard size for comfortable slide and safety buffer zone within the playground. And followed by the figuring out the, the solid and void composition within the, the playground. Uh, for play elements, um, trees, plants, and a hideout corner. Further detail on its platform level and confirm on the, on the overall setting out. And then tra translating the void area into a green and, and garden within the playscape. This is how the initial model looks like. And it's really like a little city where children can hop from one space to another on the ground and also from above. A lot of hide, hide and seek and uh, playable corners within the, this little city. In terms of detailing, our approach is documented by um, typology. For example, the typology of the, the slide and a typology of planter box uh, with trees above and other planter box typology. Cut sections to understand the construction method in a better way. An overall view of the uh, high and seek playscape from above. Play element, um, greens, trees, planter box and solid blocks um, are compositioned well to resemblance a little green city for play. Close up um, corners within the playscape for children to hide and seek. I brought my boys for testing before open for public and the residents. It works um, maybe just a little bit careful on the rough uh, concrete edging, but well, that is part of the learning process as well. The blocks are climbable. Um, games can be played um, within this playscape. Um, at the upper level as well. Other scene um, within the little city.
that's basically how this hide and seek place get is sitting within the, the overall site layout of the apartment. It's surrounded by the solid blocks and connecting to the, to the main swimming, swimming pool. This is the second last project, um, which I'm sharing with you today. The Playscape project, um, is located at the uh, La Promenade Kuching. We were invited by developer to design the public space within the master plan. Um, I'm showing you not all of them, but this, this part, um, which is the main feature for the, for the overall landscape master plan. We were asked to design a shelter or pond dock and a green or garden um, for this corner of the master plan. Our approach is to design it with a ram roof, a walkable or accessible roof for residents or either jogger or on bicycle. And below the ram, it accommodates the sheltered space for resting, gathering and hosting little neighborhood event. The composition of the site planning was prioritizing the connection to the surrounding. For example, the new housing blocks behind it, the access from the linear park on the north, the, the drop-off area from the main road on the south, and connection to the neighborhood on the east side. The blue lines show the access from the ground, and the highest level of the ramp will act as a viewing deck to the surrounding. The center courtyard has become the entrance of the playscape and it, it is framed by the ram around it and the garden around it. Drawing indicating uh, various variations in materials and contour lines in relation to the pedestrian walkway on the ground. Details of the ram above in, re in relation to the contour line below. Um, we have paid more attention uh, to the edging of the ramp so that it wouldn't look too solid like a highway bridge. Details of the edge of the ramp. Model showing the overall composition of the shelter. A man standing at the access point of the ramp from the ground and viewing towards the, the central courtyard. 3D rendering view towards the shelter from the main road. Um, the connection of the shelter area on the ground, the central courtyard, and the viewing deck above can be clearly seen from here. The connection of the green uh, with the planter box towards the, the center of the ramp. The space below the ramp framing towards the central garden. View from above, we have carefully selected the plants and trees for this playscape. It goes well um, with the Samara api tree, which is blooming, festive and vibrant. This project will be under construction soon. Okay, last project, Eton International School. The project um, that is important to us that it somehow trigger our awareness and concern to the local educational environment, changing of basically um, the entire journey and direction of my architecture, especially uh, with my teammates uh, with Into Design Lab. As mentioned earlier, this is a collaboration project with CLO Architects. The project is a winning scheme from an invited school competition organized by a developer in West Malaysia. The project is located at Kajang, and is within a new residential development called the Jet Hills by Gamuda. The school is part of the master plan to cater for this uh, high-end community. The competition project brief was to create an international institutional image that reflects its educational principle, which is driven by creative educational teaching and learning process. These are three programs of schools within the school, which are the preschool, primary, and secondary. We wanted the three schools of program to be interconnected through uh, circulation and spaces. 
the design is to create an environment which promotes active learning, creativity, and serve discovery through st stimulating and uh, enjoyable spaces. Three courtyards um, that link to the three programs of school with the connecting circulation and spaces that form a spinal loop in red color. The site is north-south oriented. This is a figure ground showing the three academic blocks. The existing platform level in red showing the entrance level, which is two meter higher than the platform at the back. We took this advantage by increasing two meter of the block at the back and thus creating a four meter high um, shaded open space for school activities. This diagram shows the center concourse area as a main circulation spine for all the facilities. Start from preschool block on the left, continue to primary school block and connect to secondary block, followed by insertion of main admin block, library, MPH and other programs. There is a central linear concourse area that links all of the programs. The site layout um, showing the, at the lower ground, the B1 level, the concourse level, which is the entrance area, level one and above. As you can see, there is a three courtyard that and a concourse, um, linear concourse area that link everything together. Upper level. Sections. Simple sections showing um, the connection of space through with a uh, different level. Slightly more detailed sections for design clarifications. Um, as you can see, the platform platform level is clearer in these sections. Um, the overall plan, a typical floor plan. This is an international school and the corporate branding of the school was taken into account. Um, the facade was formed with continual horizontal bands to en enhance the idea of the spinal loop as the main concept. And the school's identity was projected as part of the horizontal bands that stretch all over the, uh, the academic blocks of the schools. Currently, only phase one uh, was constructed as shown on this uh, physical model. View from the, the entrance. This is the Grand li Library blocks with the uh, big school signage projecting towards the entrance. You can see that uh, the visual connection from entrance platform towards the lower ground courtyard at the back, which is seen through. Um, the main drop-off area below the library block View towards the central courtyard at the lower ground. Classrooms uh, from the primary school's block and the academic staff's block are uh, overlooking to the courtyard. This is the four meter high uh, space as I mentioned earlier in the diagram. View from the primary school blocks towards the courtyard. The courtyard can be turned into an um, amphitheater and the, and the steps from the central concourse area can be functioned as a seating. Corridor in between the courtyard and the classrooms. More views at the central courtyard, vertical linkages, and the steps from uh, the main concourse area. Circulation space. Pocket park and green area in between the admin and classroom block. The main concourse area at the ground floor are meant to be the event space that connect most of the school's facilities. View from the central concourse area at the first floor. Rear elevations of the academic block which shows the colorful um, window quotes. The main library space. Overall view from the main entrance. 
generally the school is not only focusing on creative learning as a main ed educational core, but they also utilize um, architectural design to showcase the image of the school as a um, school of the future. I really hope that our local public schools environment can be improved further in the near future. Some other um, current school project that we are designing with, whenever we can, we will try to our best to design the school for better design and better learning environment because we can make a difference as a designer or architect. I hope I have inspired you a little and you have something to learn from my sharing today. I always refer to this quote from Gandhi. You must be the change you want to see in the world. So that's it. Thank you. And wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And you may also follow my patch at Into Design Lab and my other office, uh, PTC Design Group too. Thank you. Good afternoon. All right. So uh, thank you very much, Tay for the insightful presentation. Uh, I hope that, uh, and I believe that this session will be very, very beneficial for our students who are watching right now, um, especially for our first year students uh, who are still working on their uh, furniture. Uh, and I mm. see that some of your works are very much related to, to our current project. Mm. So uh, yeah, I would appreciate, uh, I would like this, uh, the member of the audience to, Take the opportunity to ask Mr. Tay a few questions before we wrap up the whole the whole uh, Ed Plus series. Uh, any questions related to, to to the presentation just now? Uh, you can either ask in the chat box section here, or can uh, turn on your mic and uh, ask directly, Mr. Tay. So I can I believe some of them are rushing for the class, I think. <laughs> 3 30 or something. Okay, la, uh, or any uh, members from the department, the lecturers. So, uh, yeah, is there anyone who wants to ask questions? I see that uh, your works are very much uh, focusing on, on, on play as a theme and uh, that is very much also directly related to children being the main uh, participants or main uh, players. Now. And then also children are always the best perceiver of our environment. Kan? Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, in fact, if you walk along the waterfront there, it's always the children who would notice the pattern of the floor tiles arrangement and it would always walk along those lines and, yep. and uh, in that sense uh, we, I think that children are response, responding to our built environment much better than we I think students. so, yes. yes. So uh, in fact, but the world is very much designed by us adults and uh, all of the measurements and the, the, the width of certain things, the length or the height of certain things are following our our measurements, lah. but uh, it is always the children who would appreciate our environment more than we do. So if there is one thing that we can learn from, from children uh, to, to somehow inform our design, what would that be? I think children, as compared to adults, I think adults will be, you know, sometimes maybe we are get, getting too used to a, to a formality, you know, lifestyle we are we are quite structured structured in terms of um, our daily routines for kids and children yes they are but they are quite adaptive in a way like um you give them anything you know like any any singular thing they can always turn out something that um um which is uh, playable or maybe they can alter the any kind of elements into their intended play or something you know they are quite creative in a way but it's it's uh, uh, the adults that actually formalize the whole process and becomes like the, in the long run they might lose that sort of creativity in a way see it's our fault lah, basically <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we seem to forget that we are all children at some point yeah and, and you're right <laughs> i think the, the city the city basically like when you, when we do a master planning for for a township or maybe for a housing area 
we have that 10% of the open space, yes. But that is only a Kawasan Lapang, right? It, it does, yeah, there's no like, <laughs> thing, no play elements or, or yeah. nothing, you know? Yeah, it, it's quite dangerous. Anyway. <laughs> That's why we are trying hard to actually, yeah, fight for the, the, the space for children. You know, um, yeah, I think we should really pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. So we would like to take another question from the member of audience. So there's a question here, Te, mm. about the furnit toy, furnit toy after the children draw on the asset and get to the point where it looks messy. Will you guys change it to the new one or just let um, it be? That one, I mean, that one is actually, we are encouraging the parents to actually allow the, 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 the children to actually explore and scribble because that is their, you know, it's a kanak kanak, right? It's their habit, right? So even this, they, they draw on the furniture or something, we always encourage the parents to actually appreciate it in the way, you know, encourage them to actually have some liberation or, or some personalization that they, they can actually explore, they can draw and they can actually mark and, and write their name on it. You know, it's actually encouraging. And if, let's say, my kids do it, I wouldn't change, you know, to a new one. Yeah. No point. <laughs> Any more question? Do you have any personal favorite projects in <laughs> terms of construction and design-wise? Oh, very broad question. <laughs> <laughs> I think anything this. that... Um, Thoughtful, you know, um, I like the projects that um, you have a lot of thought in it, you know, a, a lot of creativity in it. So there is a lot, I think. I, I, I don't have a specific one at the moment, yeah. yeah. Or, or any, no, I, I just want to add on on this. Um, or any architect that they, they explore, um, you know, they, they in, sort of like injecting the playful, playfulness in their design process creative and out of the box kind of thing. You know, that, that is the architect that I always uh, observe. Uh. Mm. Not okay. to follow the normal kind of uh, procedure kind of thing. All right, so I may have overlooked this question. Uh, there's another mm -hmm. question on uh, your approach on improving the community. Uh, what is your opinion on breaking the norm and conventional design without removing the essence of character of local architecture style? What's your opinion on breaking the norms mm -hmm. mentioned without removing the essence? Okay. Without breaking the norms. I mean, um, you mean in terms of the character of the architecture, the local architecture, it, actually the, the style of architecture, it doesn't quite relate to, to the, you know, like community um, involvement or creative design or that. What we are actually intended to, to tell is basically the, the space in between or the outdoor space. You know, it doesn't mean that the conventional building that um, you, cannot, you cannot have creativity or you cannot have that sort of informal space within it. Kind of thing. But sometimes um, we might be too uh, controlled by the idea of these um, conventional buildings or traditional buildings, you know, because the plan is so structured that um, you don't allow a lot of uh, liberation to, to break through. Like. So it's always uh, like a new generation, maybe it's time to actually break it around and, and explore more. Otherwise, we will be like looking sort of like going backwards again. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's another question. Uh, if there's still any chance that Cardboard City will be held again? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's actually quite tiring. Yeah, <laughs> I need to check with Swan and uh, my, my my partner Sim. Yeah, it's quite tiring actually. It's not easy because um, although it's uh, we are doing it together with Pam throughout chapter, but a lot of um, interaction with uh, question and answer and promotion to the local school. You know, especially encouraging the the primary school to to get involved. But I believe after the two installments, let's, let's, say, let's say we have the next one, I think it's, it's very easy to market and, and sell and promote already. Lah. So we, we are looking for one maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope that it will be materialized. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, we look forward to, to join or participate. 
for perhaps uh, helping you out in the process. <laughs> There's another question here. Uh, what you say? What would you say has been your design philosophy of the last ten years? Is there a recurring theme locally? This is from your former student Ashraf. Ashraf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have that sort of like uh, big topics that I can really refer to. But I, I really um, enjoy the sort of. Um, you know, sometimes the informality <laughs> of, of design, uh, you know, like um, I try to think out of the box kind of directions. Yeah. Ashraf, uh, hi. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question from Donna here. Uh, great oh, works. Uh, I'm wondering, where did you get any funding for the community projects? Funding? Um... Did you get any funding? Oh, okay. Um, you mean like the, for example, the the cardboard city and all that? Mm -hmm. Yes, funding from uh, private sector, funding from PAM throughout chapter um, and other organizations. Because you you need to collaborate with a lot of parties to make things um, successful. Because all this community work is not a private project. Private project, you have one client, they pay you the money and they get it built. But community in the sense like you need a lot of collaboration for a lot of party. You know, even the neighbors, the local uh, people, and uh, the organizations that they would like to do a CSR, and then uh, of course you need to sell the idea to and the and the story behind to to them, in order to get the funding from them. Government funding is very rare, but private sector and other NGO, yes. All right. Uh, okay, we will be having. Okay, two more questions. All right, two more questions, huh? Uh, on your design, uh, would you prefer to be in contrast or in harmony with the surrounding context? And number two is, uh, if, if if having internship in your firm, is it possible? No, that is from Daryl. Daryl is uh. my ex student. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't answer that. Okay, the the harmony and and context. I think. We shouldn't restrict ourselves into like, okay, you have a preconceived idea of, okay, this project, I'm going to be contrast to the surrounding or I'm going to be like harmony to the surrounding or that. But I think let the design process explore. If let's say there's a need to actually contrast to the surrounding, then we contrast to the surrounding. You, you get what I mean? If, if let's say there's a need to actually be harmonious to the surrounding community and then you, you do it as for the purpose. It's not like you have the preconceived idea and, and and have a you no know, contrast and, and harmonized kind of a form or space to go against it. Like. Yeah. With purpose, I would say. All right. So, okay. So is, is that all? Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to uh, end this session. <laughs> it's like a press conference, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and it's the first time that I actually try to record it because I think yeah. I can use it for the teaching material and for other universities as well. Uh, uh, so. so would you like to have another question? No? All right. No, I think that's no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Mr. Tay. It is certainly very, uh, very insightful. Uh, I think we have learned a lot. Uh, we appreciate that there is a, a firm that is very much speculative and uh, working on uh, hypothetical projects. Uh, which is uh, a firm that is very much uh, challenging the status quo, uh, which is based in Kuching. Uh, it's quite refreshing to see that yeah, is happening here in Kuching. So, uh, and we also, on behalf of the department, uh, would appreciate your presence here in, in, the, in the faculty as well. Uh. So, uh, with that, I would, I would like to end this uh, uh, at plus uh, set issue number six. So, on next uh, at plus. Donna, kita akan ada siapa? Arkitek Wihimin. Wihimin. <laughs> who will be talking on the topic of, I don't know, I think Donna will. Uh, that will be on Monday. All right, on Monday. Yeah. Tata, can I say something? Oh, yeah. Prof. Akmal, our dean is here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. I've been here and listening. Congratulations, Tay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it has been actually fun to see your project. But uh, I, I really wish we could actually uh, really uh, get our collaborations working together to build the library for the, uh, yeah. the village, uh, village uh, the, the water village people. But if we no. can't, maybe we can find a ways how we can actually sort of like start uh, community community projects to link really into uh, really building a lot of libraries and you know, even mobile library for the people. So uh, let, let's uh, have a discussion later on. Uh, maybe we can actually apply for some sustainability grants. 
to actually uh, go ahead with that. Uh, so yeah, that's what yes, uh, yes. Uh, we, uh, we plan. Yeah. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. I'm still not, not going to see you, Kat. Next year, Adela Giri. Bye, Jay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.